Hello and welcome back to another episode of An Injustice for All MMA. My name is David, and this episode is for UFC Fight Night Sanhagen versus Song. Um, we'll just jump right into it. We have an injustice for the first time in I think a very long time. Uh, I think the past few weeks it's just been close fights, close fights, close fights, and there's a couple close fights on here where, you know, certain rounds could have been exchanged. Um, certain fights could have been changed, but we have something here where I've hammered on it maybe 7 billion times and it just becomes a thing where, you know, it's not fair to just say this is an interpretation. You know, it's one thing to go, this is my opinion and I think this man did this, right? That's one thing. It's another to say... This guy, obviously, effectively struck this person, and this person did not effectively grapple, and I think you know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about the first and only injustice on this card, okay, Feely versus Algio, we'll we'll go straight to it, my scorecard is 29-28, this fight ended in a split D for, for Andre Feely, but... I had this 29-28 for Algio. I gave a, him a 10-9 in the second and the third round. So in the very first round, it was close on strikes, but Feely had the better shots. They were they were much more powerful, and they were landing. I think if you look at the official strike numbers, Algio kind of outstrikes him, I believe. But um, they, they were close, and most of Feely's shots were more powerful than Algio's, hence why he won the round. Um, then you go into the second round. Okay, Algio kind of barely outstrikes uh, Feely. It was kind of close up until the very end, up until the very end where Algio kind of lets loose a, a combination and essentially that steals the round. You're, in your head, you're just like, boom, he won the round. Um, then we go to the controversial part, which I hate saying controversial because the word controversial means you can argue both sides of the coin. In this sense, you can't really argue it, and I'll break it down. Third round, it's close on the feet. Very very little happens on the feet, I want to point out. Very little happens on the feet. It's, it's, it's maybe a couple seconds on the feet, and then Feely goes for a takedown. Immediately goes for a takedown, gets, gets his back, has in a rear naked choke, but it's not in. And immediately on top of that, Algio is is throwing strikes behind his head and landing. These aren't like those weird shots that are kind of like glancing off of somebody's head. They're full punches that are hitting Feely in his face over and over and over and over and over again. You know, a while ago, I was mad at the um, Damon Jackson versus uh, Archuleta. Ar- Argetta, maybe Argetta or Archuleta fight, where th- that two rounds of, of, of that fight is similar to this, where someone's being held and Ar- Jackson is holding down Argetta and he's outstruck and he's being outstruck on the ground. And maybe in a different universe, you can go the strikes aren't enough to 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 say that he's winning versus Damon's effective grappling. Okay, maybe that's your argument. That's fine. In this case, Feely had two submission attempts. And while they were in, they weren't in in the sense that he was not submitted. Algio was not submitted. And that at a certain point, Algio stopped fighting the hands. He stopped fighting the hands and he just kept striking. Meaning, the sub isn't in. You know, it's one thing to go, the sub is in, let me try it. He did try and move his hands at one point, obviously. But... When the sub isn't in, when the sub when the sub is in, and instead of you attacking the hands, you're hitting my you're hitting the opponent's face. It's no longer effective grappling at this point. You are not effectively submitting this man. He was outstruck from top to bottom in that third round, and we've seen rounds like this. I can go off again billions of times, billions of times. Kunitskaya versus um versus uh. Uh, Ketlin Vieira. But you know what's funny in that one? The amount of strikes that Algio landed in the in in this similar position is way more than 
Kunitz Sky landed on Kentlin Vieira. And way more powerful. I know we can't compare the two, two different fights, whatever. But if we're just going to be honest here, he outstruck him on the ground. He have, There was no effective grappling other than the takedown. The submission attempts that were not in enough to finish. Finish him. And weren't good enough to where he couldn't not take any of Algeo's strikes. We keep coming down to this interpretation, and it comes down again on the judges' scorecards, where we look at the judges' scorecards. Um, Saul Diamata had it 29-28 um, for Feely. All right, he, the first two rounds were for like my, my scorecard. All all the judges, the first two rounds were for like my scorecard, right? It comes down to the third round. He gives the third round to Feely. You got Chris Lee. Gives the third round to Algeo. And then Derek clearly he gives the third round to Feely. This is a common theme tonight because there's another fight I'll mention where a person on the bottom is just winning and they just ignore it. They ignore it. These are some of those positions that shouldn't be ignored. Earlier, later in the, in, in the card, um, San Hagen is talking about the scorecards and we'll talk about that later, but he's he talks about how Hey, I gotta see the scorecards just to see how they scored or what the, what they're thinking. Because in his head, he's looking at the at the at the fight he had with Dillashaw. He's like, "Yo, all those clinch positions really helped me win the round." When yes and no, because the difference in the clinch positions that he had with with Corey, excuse me, with uh, with Dillashaw is he's clinched up and he's kind of active in the clinch positions. If he were to use that philosophy, the problem here in San Hagen's fight with Song is that. If you're to count the clinch strikes, if you're to count how active he is in the clinch, Song was more clinch, uh, was more active in the clinch than, than Sanhagen was. So that philosophy goes out the window. The point I'm making here is, not to crap on Sanhagen, but the point is, at this point, we don't know what the fuck they're judging. Because if they're not judging what's happening, if, if they're definitely not judging what happened on the fence, which I mean, they may have, in the clinch, in, in the Sanhagen versus Song fight, What? How are we? How do we tell if they're if they're even acknowledging? We know one judge, obviously, in two of these fights that I'm about to name, um, acknowledged the work that the bottom fighter was doing. But two judges decided, no, you being held on bottom with two submission attempts that weren't effective is well more important than you getting outstruck from the bottom. We're gonna keep getting flippy floppy cards unless you know two judges that just sim- that just lean that way are gonna be on on that fight. But that's just how it that's just how it is. It, it was very frustrating to watch and see that not enough judges went in the way of hey the bottom fighter should have won when he was the most active person in that round. So there's an injustice. I think I think I, I'll just should have won this fight. He didn't. It sucks, but whatever. We move on. Uh, we go straight to the honorable mentions category. Um, these are the fights that I just uh, nitpick. Um, first one is Gravely versus Basharat. Okay, I had this 30-27 for Basharat. Um, I will acknowledge that maybe I got the first round wrong. Maybe. Uh, I didn't put a close marker on this, but I thought it was... Enough on, enough on the feet for both of them to where Basharat kind of ended well, to where he kind of stole the round. All three judges didn't score it that way, so I'm, I'm kind of feeling maybe they just felt Gravely did a lot more in the first half to give him that round in totality. That's fine. I want to, in my head, I want to say maybe I scored this wrong, but I'm fine with this scorecard actually. Um, so I had a 30-27 for Basharat in that very first round. Um, in the very first round, both had a takedown. Uh, both were 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 kind of close on on strikes, and Basharat finished well. I also thought that Basharat landed some more shots with his takedown with his takedown than uh, Gravely did. Hence, why I gave him the round. Um, second round, Basharat outstruck Gravely. Gravely, uh, Basharat had a takedown with ground and bound for about two plus minutes, um, and then the third round, Basharat just outstruck Gravely. We've got the judges' scorecards. Um, 
All three judges had a 29-28. They gave uh, the last two rounds to Basharat, and they all gave the third round to the first round to uh, to Gravely. All had it. Uh, Chris Lee, Anthony Manis, and uh, Junichiro Kamija all had it the same way. Next honorable mention on the card, we had Ogden versus uh, Zell Huber. Zell Huber? Zell Huber. I had a 30-27. Um, I had a 30-27 for Ogden. First round, Ogden outstruck uh, Zell Huber, mostly with leg kicks. It kind of reminded me of the, the fight uh, Ogden had with Levitt, where in the second round... Ogden just couldn't land anything, and he just got outstruck by leg kicks by Levitt. It, it really reminded me of that. That was kind of funny. Um, and then the second round, Ogden outstruck uh, Zell Huber again, and he had a takedown at the very end. Um, third round, he outstruck Zell Huber again. I don't know what you need here. Uh, scorecards. We go to the scorecards. Um Douglas Crosby had a 30-27 for Ogden. Chris Lee had it uh, 29-28 for Ogden. He gave the, the second round to to Zell Huber. I was, I was thinking he was going to give the third to Zell Huber, but he gave the second round to Zell Huber. No. Honorable mention to him. That's dead. No. Second round is obviously uh, Ogden's round. And then 30-27, Junior Chiro Kamija gave all three rounds to Ogden. All right, we go to the next honorable mention. Uh, Gomes versus Luke Boomi. I had a 30-27 for Luke Boomy. This was a weird fight. If something had, like, if few things, if a few things had changed, maybe you could have scored one of these rounds for Luke, for, for Gomes. I think the closest round, not saying that this round belonged to her, but the closest round you could give to Gomes is, I believe, maybe the third, maybe, but no, in my opinion. Well, I had a 30-27 for Luke Boomy, the first round, first round. Uh, Luke Boomy outstruck Gomes on the feet, had some ground and pound with some elbows with her takedown. Uh, Go- Gomes had a, like a submission attempt close to the end of the round, but again, Luke Boomy did enough work in the top half and after that submission attempt to, to solidify that round for her. Um, second round, Luke Boomy had two takedowns with ground and pound. And then the third round, uh, Gomes had a takedown with some ground and pound for about two plus minutes, but then... Here's the reason I think most people give it to Luke Boomy is and, and me is yeah her ground and pound wasn't a lot nor enough it was very little and once Luke Boomy reversed position and got her own takedown um she just had better ground and pound elbows elbows more ferocious elbows 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 hence why she won that round um judge's scorecard 327 Mike Bell uh Luke Boomy uh, Saul Dima, 30-27 to Luke Boomy. And then Derek clearly uh, gives the last round. It, it, he had 29-28 for Luke Boomy, but gives the last round to Gomes. Honorable mention to Derek Cleary. Um, fifth round. Not fifth round, excuse me. Fifth honorable mention. Giles versus Kosi. Uh, Co- had this 29-28 uh, for Giles. I gave him the first two rounds. And then in the third round, it was close. It was close. I think you can give it to either person. I gave it to uh, Kosi. I'll explain in a second. Um, in that first round, Giles outstruck Kosi. Um, a lot of, a lot of, very little shots, but he outstruck him. Obviously, um, second round, Giles again outstruck Kosi. This one by a more tenable margin. And then in the third round, Kosi had a takedown. Very little ground and pound for three minutes. He he was on him for three minutes. He controlled him for three minutes. Um, very little ground about it. He was holding them a lot more. And then Giles kind of got up and, and, and had a lot of clinch and, and clinched him. He got up, he clinched him. And then he landed some knees to the thigh back leg area of Kosi to where, because Kosi was so inactive on the, on top, um, because he was so inactive on top. It gave this look of Giles had done more work than Kosi. When, you know, it, it kind of leaves that thing in your head where you're like, eh, you, now, now you're kind of confused in a sense where you're like, eh, you can kind of argue this for either person on the last round. But um, I felt as though Kosi had had him down for the longest, most of the round, 
and gave enough grind amount to where whatever Giles did in that ending sequence wasn't enough to take the round, hence why I gave it to Kosi. Um, yeah, hence why I gave the last round to Kosi. Um, scorecards. Chris Lee, his scorecard reflects mine. Uh, Junshiro Kamijo, his scorecard reflects mine. The Anthony Manis has a 30-27. He gave that last round to to, get, to Giles. I think that's that's fine. Um, then we go to the next honorable mention. Uh, Boser versus Nascimento. Another fight on this card that if one more, you know, the judges just didn't respect the attack from the bottom. Uh, I had this 29-28 for, for, for Bozer. Uh, the last two rounds I gave to Bozer. The second round I put a close marker on. So even though I'm complaining here, it doesn't matter because you can actually argue this in either direction. The, 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 I put a close marker on the second round. Uh, the first round I gave to Nascimento, obviously. Um, first round, Bozer had outstruck Nascimento on the feet. Um, but it wasn't enough in the sense that Nascimento got a takedown with very little ground to pound for the butt, with about two plus minutes. Despite Bozer outstriking him on the feet, Nascimento obviously landed enough to where... It's not as though Bozer outlanded him a lot, like sharply enough to where the work on, uh, to where Nascimento's work on the ground negated what he did, um, in that first half of the round. You know, he, Bozer barely outstruck him, is what I'm trying to say, on the feet, and then Nascimento kind of took the round once he once he got on the ground. And then you go in the second round. <clears throat> Uh, Bozer outstruck Nascimento on the feet, but Nascimento got a takedown with a very little ground and pound and a submission attempt. But, but, but the entire time, the entire time, Bozer was active on the bottom. He was very active on the bottom. The work on the feet actually did now dictate how I scored this second this second round. He, he did enough work on the feet to where what Nascimento did on the ground wasn't wasn't relevant. But it was very close in the sense that it was. You were in my head; it was kind of going back and forth, and Nazi Mental could have won this round. Hence, why I put the close marker on it. Um, and then in that third round, this is a hundred percent Bozer's round. Okay, this is a hundred percent Bozer's round. I, I, I won't hear anything, anything less. Okay, Nazi Mental got a takedown with three plus minutes, but just like in the Feely fight, now. I will say Nascimento landed more strikes than Feely did on the on the ground, but Bozer outstruck him on the ground. He was more active than him. He was more active than Nascimento. He outstruck him from the bottom. He outstruck him in this round, period. And yet, it didn't matter because we go to the scorecards. He was more active on the bottom. We go to the scorecards. 29-28. Doug Crosby, he had that he had this for Bozer. Here's here's my pissed moment. Okay? He gives the first round to Bozer, honorable mention, nonsense. He gives the first round to Bozer. He gives the second round to Bozer. So he saw what I saw. And then he gives the last round to Nascimento. This scorecard is jumbled up. You go to Adelaide Bird, who gives the first round to Nascimento, second round to Bozer, and then gives the third round to Nascimento. Nonsense, honorable mention. I hate this scorecard. I hate, both, I hate all three scorecards. Um... And then Junshiro Kamijo gives the first to Nascimento, gives the second to Nascimento, not mad at it, it's a close run, and then gives the third, he's thinking the same thing all the other the other two judges are thinking, which is what Nascimento did on the ground was more effective than what Bozer did on the ground. And I'm just I'm just lost for words. I'm just lost for words that all three judges scored the third round for Nascimento. Honorable mentions all around, just fucking <sighs> just fucking nonsense. Go to the last honorable mention on this card. Um, San Hagen versus Song. I'm I'm starting to hate these. <laughs> okay, I'm starting to hate these power versus uh, <laughs> power versus filler shots, or in another word, power versus just activity, right? Because now now everyone's scorecard is fucked, and it's represented in mine, and and the judges' scorecards. Um, I. This fight obviously ended in a TKO for San for San Hagen, Doctor Stoppage. Um, I gave all four rounds to San Hagen. 
Uh, I put a close mark on the first. I think you can argue that for song. Obviously, all three judges did. Um, in that very first round, it was close on strikes. Song got a takedown, but Sanhagen was just more active on the bottom. I felt as though he had done enough on the feet, and he was more active on the bottom to where that takedown was irrelevant, hence why I gave him the round. But it was close because the strikes were, strikes were close on the feet, and then, San, and then Song brought him to the ground. So, boom, you can kind of argue that in either direction. Second round, close on strikes again, but Sanhagen had the more damaging shots. I believe that's when the cut happened. I, I want to say yes. Right? Third... Yes, I want to say that's when that's when the cut happened. He landed much more damage in, in that round, gave that round to Sanhagen. Third round, fourth round, this is obviously Sanhagen. Um, third round, Sanhagen outstruck Song. Close on strikes, but he outstruck him, and he was mixing it in well. Body, head, legs. Fourth round, Song had a, had a takedown, um, but Sanhagen had two takedowns. With ground and pound. He had more effective ground and pound in, in that fourth round. And he outstruck Song on the feet. And was and both were active on the bottom. When, when Song had a takedown, um, Sanhagen was very active on the bottom. When, so when Sanhagen had a takedown, Song was very active on the bottom. But Song had outstruck him throughout the entire round. Uh, and he had an extra takedown. Hence why that fourth round goes down. The other judges' scorecards... Um, First round, all three judges had the first round for Song. It's a close round. Cool. Um, we'll start with Saul Diamato. Saul Diamato had it had the last, the fourth and the third round he gave to Sanhagen. He had the first two to to Song. I disagree with that. I'm gonna say on a momentum. I disagree with that. He gave the the second round a Song. Whatever. <laughs> we'll move on. Uh, Chris Lee. Um, gave the first round to Song. The the next three rounds he then gave to Sanhagen. I think that's I think that's fine. And then uh, Derek clearly reflects uh, Saul Diamato's scorecards. Honorable mention there. I, I really don't like that second round one. I know most people maybe gave it to Song. Maybe I haven't checked the online scorecards on this one yet. So I don't know. But it was close on strikes. And Sanhagen had more damage. He cut him open. And uh, it's weird, right? Because I think there was an earlier fight on this card. Because in my head when I was watching it. Because the stream is fucked up. Um, on ESPN Plus, but what's funny is that it it, it didn't look like a headbutt, but it it, it looked like a, it looked like he cut him open with with the elbow. I don't know if they saw the they thought it was a headbutt. I'm not gonna assume they didn't think it was a headbutt or did think it was a headbutt, but I think there was another fight. Um, I think there was another fight where. Um, if I can find it. Ah, it was Gravely versus Basharat, right? I think it was the first round where Gravely, <laughs> Gravely, like, headbutted uh, Basharat on accident. Or they clash of heads on accident. I don't want to say he headbutted him. Clash of heads. And Basharat was really adamant. Like, hey, yo, it's a headbutt. Tell everyone it's a headbutt. And so, you know, I'm sure the judges were like, all right, that's fine. But they still scored it for, for Gravely. So, I, I don't think they really care about all that shit. Um, and that's it. That's it. We're done. It was actually a really fun card. Really fun card. I actually like when fight nights end in a finish. Like the final fight ends in a finish. I think it puts a stamp on the whole thing. Um, it put it puts a real stamp on the whole thing. A lot of cuts. A lot of real nasty cuts that I'll probably look at later and uh, fester over. Anyways, thank you for listening. And God bless.